Cancer and football. It is bringing communities together across the state to raise awareness and money to support Minnesota's cancer community. It's called Tackle Cancer. And for one coach, you can add service to country as another way he's giving back. Seventeen years ago, last month. Nobody expected to go to, the, to work that day, and nobody expected to get on those airplanes that day and have it their last day. I have an emergency. What is your location? I was in the Pentagon, in Washington, D.C., in the Pentagon on 9-11. I think what I learned that day is the same thing I learned from this, the, the most recent experience, to tell you the truth, is that you got to make every day count. That most recent experience is cancer. Diagnosed not long after Nate Fryer moved back to Minnesota. I grew up here. Here is beautiful Red Wing, a place Nate called home for over 30 years. Here we go. You guys with the bags come across the line of scrimmage. Set. I can't. I can't. A place he loves. All right, listen up. Even in the pouring rain. Here's the bottom line. During an August football practice, now you're gonna see it. Nate is in his second year as the wingers head coach. All right. The job is a challenge he equates you're gonna run stretch on the whistle. to his 20 years in the Army. Here we go. Set. The best part of it is the same reason I like being a platoon leader or a company commander in the Army. All right, listen up, guys. I'm going to tell you right now. Someone who can't see the way to the end or someone who can't see the way to the, to the goal and helping them see the way and then leading them there and taking them there. Here we go. Come on. Let's go. Playable. Let's go. It's playable. Go. Good. There is football success. It was a pretty good time in Red Wing to be a football player. Something Nate Fryer knows a lot about. 1983, Red Wing made it all the way to the big school state semifinals in football, and that number 51, Nate Fryer, was one of the wingers' captains. What goes around has now, 35 years later, come around. My best friend from high school and the guy I was captain of the football team on the 83 team with now holds a down marker routinely on Friday night. And so I was back on the sidelines with him again like it was like we were 17 years old again. And when he's not on the field, he's still defending our country. Nate is a researcher for the Army War College. Right now, he's working on the military competition in the Pacific between the U.S. and China. He loves serving his country, and this work pays the bills. Come on, don't be afraid of him. Let's go. But this job, this job there, there. feeds his soul. Good. Now, heavy hand, heavy hand. I'm a pretty intense, hands-on kind of guy. Just like you're turning a steering wheel, heavy hand. Nate loves football. And he embraces the life lessons the game teaches every day. And nothing, not even a surprise bout with prostate cancer last year. What you don't want to do is open the door up. Can get in his way. Let him in. Yes, right. he learned quickly. Keep your shoulders parallel line of scrimmage. He's not 29 and bulletproof. Keep your base anymore. I would almost argue that that was true until the day that, until the moment I, I woke up after the surgery. And then I felt every 52 years and however many, you know, weeks, days, hours, and minutes that that is, I felt every bit of it after that surgery. But he also felt the love and support of the Red Wing community. Nate is now cancer free. And this man of service is grateful for everything. I just know that the greatest amount of personal satisfaction and growth comes from the things you do on behalf of others. Big boys on two. One, two, big boys. And that you do with others on behalf of others. Words to live by for sure. Nate is like all of those who've been through prostate cancer. He's keeping an eye on his PSA and making sure that that cancer stays away. Tonight at 10, we will have another Tackle Cancer story about Luke Bonte from St. Francis. Wow, inspirational guy.